Now today's big idea is um, we're going to continue a little bit about what we started last time, which was the Google Analytics and all of that. And we've got to look at topics of uh, backlinks, uh, the efficacy of, efficacy of our social, of our SEO tactics, and then also the um, the tactics to, to get more traffic. Now, this class is sort of like a, a total, total picture, and it really works best when it's four weeks long, five weeks long. Sometimes, depending on the semester, we get four weeks, we get uh, three weeks, sometimes we even get five weeks, depending on the month. This month we got three weeks, so um, that does mean, unfortunately, I cannot fit in every single topic that I want to talk about in three weeks. It's just not, there's literally not enough time. You're welcome to take the, uh, the class again next time, uh, as many times as you want, because this stuff changes. This is one way that this keeps a job security in a sense. This is changing all the time. So I teach it uh, every few months, and it might change every few months, and so it behooves you to keep up with it, uh, SEO. So what we'll be talking about today is uh, checking our backlinks, what to do about good backlinks. Well, first of all, what backlinks are, then what to do about good backlinks and bad backlinks, and how that all relates to SEO and SEM. So I've actually got a document for you in the network folder. You can print this out when you uh, when you're going to, when I'm going to turn the printer on, but at the moment um, we can go to the network folder on the desktop. So you can open the network folder here and then you can go to the network drive, my folder, Campos SEO. And I've got a new document for your for you here. Number three, backlinks. So if you had a copy of that, drag it to your desktop or your flash drive. We'll look at it together, talk about it in theory, and then apply it in practice. And you can print it out when I turn the printer on during the, <coughs> the next break. We'll copy that over and let's open it up to look at it. So I'll be showing you an excerpt a little bit later about the book that I recommend. Remember I've mentioned that there are two books that I recommend. I'm going to uh, show you a few excerpts from it in a little bit, but I'm mentioning them again here. They're on Amazon. They are the Kindle versions, which is, which is good because if you get the Kindle version of the book, you don't need a Kindle to view the book. Just any web browser will work, any phone will work. Uh, if you've got an iPhone, an Android, a Windows phone, there's an app to view Kindle books. So you don't need a Kindle reader to read a Kindle book from Amazon. And these two are about $3.99 each or so. The, uh... So in it there's a part that talks about backlinks, and here I have I have, uh, which we'll look at briefly, but my instructions are right here, where to find your backlinks in your, in your um, analytics and so forth. So to step back, backlinks, also known as incoming links or inbound links, basically links to your site. Nowadays the search engines value that more. They value that some other website has linked to your website, with caveats of course. But think about it like this, when you were writing a paper for an English class or maybe a college course, especially a college course. If you're writing a 10-page paper for a college course and, you, and it's brilliant and you turn it in without a works cited page, most likely you will get an F on that paper because uh, especially as a student, the instructor, the professor is not going to believe that you invented all of this knowledge yourself in this 10-page paper. You got some of the knowledge, you synthesized it from other resources. You looked up resources in the library, in journals, on the internet, Wikipedia, whatever. You got resources, information from other established authors, other research papers, other theories. You synthesized it into your 10-page paper. You turn it in with a works cited page that shows you got some of the information from here. 
Well, you used those books, those journals, and so forth. You used them because you felt they were useful to you. They bolstered your message. They, they were relevant and useful to your, to your own paper. Therefore, you linked to them. You used them in your paper. Uh, similar to that, think about that with your website. If another website links to your website, they probably link to it because your website has relevant, important, interesting, useful, funny information, whatever kind of information you're presenting. Therefore, another website links to your website because you're, in a sense, being the work cited. So the search engines look at that. They see the web of connections. They see that your website has 10 links from some other website to your website whereas your competitor only has one link or two links and you've got ten so the search engines see that and they see that your website is more valuable in a sense because you've got other websites linking to your website and those are the backlinks and that's why that's important it's important for other websites to link to my website like the concept of the work cited we'll be able to look up on our webmaster tools here what what they are, um, where they're coming from, uh, who they are, and all of that. Because if, if you have good websites linking to your website, that boosts your website. If for whatever reason your, you know, your website about uh, your first-hand experience with uh, you know, cancer drugs gets linked to by the American Journal of Cancer, that's obviously a big plus for you. Such a big, reputable website linked to your website, that's going to boost your website. If I uh, have a website about uh, cooking and I get, you know, the Food Network links to my website, that's amazing for me. That's going to get me traffic. Well, I might be a food blogger and another food blogger, maybe a little bit higher than me, links to me. That's going to be good too. I've got links now generating, I've got traffic now being generated from someone else's website. Conversely, low quality websites linking to your website could drag down your website. So we have good inbound links or backlinks. We've got bad inbound links. And we'll talk about what to do with the good ones and what to do with the bad ones. But we won't know, do we have links to our website? unless we set up these webmaster tools. That's why we did it last week. Today we'll log back in. Maybe you'll have some data to look at. If not, I'll show you examples of real clients. And I'll explain things and specifically about the backlinks. But in short, one of the things that helps your SEO is that other websites link to your website. Other relevant websites link to your website. Well, a tactic in the old days was you can buy a website for $10. So in the old days, I would spend $500. I would buy five other websites from Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever and link them all together. And in the old days, that would work because the search engines weren't as smart. They would just see a web of connections. But one website was about shoe repair and one was about food blogging and one was about pets. Those are not related. So why are they linked together? Now the search engines would ask that and then see that there's no relation and lower your ranking because there's no relation. That was gaming the system. So if you've got a bunch of websites right now linked together, that you yourself linked together, and they're not rel related to each other, that might not be helping your SEO. So you have to evaluate that. Are the links that I've created to my site relevant? If they're not, you might think about removing them because they might not be helping you. So we'll go into detail about how to get more backlinks. We want to see, do we have backlinks? Any questions so far? I'm going to show you first with Bing. So if you'd like to log into your Bing Webmaster Tools, we set them up last week. <coughs> The address is bing.com slash toolbox. So let's 
go to bing.com slash toolbox and then log in with the account that you created last week. We created the account last week, so we don't need to create it again, but you do need to log in. So, as I said, in my account, I deal with several clients' websites. So mine shows a variety of, of clients' websites. You only have one, probably. So which, whatever it shows you here, go ahead then and click on your website so we can see the details. Again, in our three weeks, we don't have the time, unfortunately, to go into every single detail, but in general, in our dashboard here, we get some statistics about how many more times your website has appeared on search, how many clicks it's had, any crawl errors, and so forth. So within this time period of 30 days, it shows that I've been clicked on more times here. Question in the back? Question in the back? Okay, great, uh, but we're in the middle of the lecture, so if you can keep it down just a little bit, please. So here we've got clicks from search. In this time period, this website has been clicked on more times than the last time. That's good. I want to get clicked. I want my website to be clicked on more times. Well, I need to be visible on, this, on the search results. And here it shows there's been a little bit of a drop in visibility, but there's been more clicks, which is good, a good trade-off. And of course, a bunch of data and such. Uh, for example, it's telling me keywords. These are some keywords that people have been typing to, to, uh, to get found, for this client to get found. For the moment, I want to check, OK, what are the links that are coming into this site? My handout here um, says, OK, finding your backlinks in, in uh, Bing, you log into the dashboard, you go to the reports and data, side panel and you'll see something called inbound links. Sometimes they're called inbound links, incoming links, uh, backlinks, links to your site. So under the dashboard, under reports and data, inbound links. This particular client shows there's a slight upward trend of links within this time period. 30 days, if I change it for a different time, there were the sum amount, which then went down a bit. But on the most recent report, it shows here. The way that we read this is that these are the pages on your site, and then how many links are pointed to that particular page. So to the home page, it has 296 inbound links. Next is the dinner menu. Next is a particular blog. Next is a contact. So we're seeing that most of the links that are going to the site are going to the home page. That's fine. Yes? Does it only count for links that have been clicked to your site? No, it's just links from someone else's site to your site. So if I make on my site, I make a link to your website, but nobody ever clicks on it, it still gets counted. Yes. Okay. But the more traffic, the better, of course. Uh, so this will then tell us what, what links we have and not necessarily exactly the traffic. We see that on another screen. Uh, so the search engines do take that into account. There could be a website that just has, that is just full of links. 
and the search engine will see this is a low quality site it's just got links so we will not count it as much if you have only seven links but they're coming from others related to your to your topic or your niche then the search engine will count that higher to, to then actually see the links you can uh, click either your name or the number um, of the links so it says for example Beth Shalom Temple, tripwhat.com, MapQuest, thirdavenuevillage.com, a blog in Japan, um, BMC Inc., etc. So this gives me the raw information that these are the links pointing to that page, the home page. The anchor text is what is the text that's on that website that is the active link? Because you can make anything a link. You can have a picture that's a link. You can have the word link that's a link. You can have the word home, the home, the word website, the name of the website, whatever. Uh, it used to be very important to get an anchor link that was the name of your website with your keywords pointing to you. Now that's less important. The big idea is that you've got a link to your website. It doesn't matter as much that the link comes from the link being called home or website or your address. It's just that you've got a link to your website. It still doesn't matter though? It, it matters to some degree, but not as much as, as it used to because you don't have any control. I don't have any control to tell BethShalomTemple.com, please use this, this, this keyword. I don't have that control. Uh, just like when you, the analogy that I gave earlier, if you're writing a term paper and you're using Works Cited, you have no control over the, the Works Cited, but you're using the Works Cited because it's useful to you. So, no, it's not as important the actual anchor text keyword, as long as you've got the link with caveats. I'll get to those caveats in a moment. But this, I think, is a little cumbersome to work with, unfortunately. So that's why we've got an export button. This will export it as a, as a spreadsheet, as an Excel file, and I think that's much better to work with. So just to show you, you can do this if you want. If you have any links, click Export. It's going to want to download or save. I'm going to open it in Word, uh, in Excel. Once it's in Excel, I can organize it, I can highlight, I can make notes. It's kind of limited what we can see on the site. So then I've got these results. I can organize. You know, I can filter them alphabetically. So I'm seeing the or the the quiet coyote .com has several links from their site over to the site to this clients site I can see a few from Third Avenue Village that's the that's the business association where the restaurant is located something called trait.com something called trip what MapQuest <coughs> So people still are using MapQuest to search. Maybe I didn't think about that. Maybe I'm only thinking about Google Maps. Well, that means that if, if I'm getting traffic from MapQuest, how does my listing on MapQuest look? I go, to, I go to see my listing and whoops, it doesn't even have my current logo. Well, now that I know this, I can go to MapQuest, maybe as a business, claim my business, and then spruce it up so that whatever traffic that I'm getting from MapQuest is more relevant. Uh, traffic. Let's see, MapQuest. A lot of traffic from MapQuest. Mm -hmm. Groupon. There's something from Groupon there. Yes. Did you set up most of these links for your clients? Nope, this is what I said earlier. These links are coming from websites, from external websites and I haven't mentioned it much more explicitly but really the thing is these links should come from websites that you do not control websites that you do not have a say in the link 
Because again, as I said earlier, I could have spent $500 and bought 10 websites and linked them all together. And in the old days, that would work when the search engines were dumber. Now that they're smarter, they're going to see why are all these 10 websites linked together that are not relevant. These seem to be like review websites, map websites, food websites, and they're from other people that we do not control. So the point of then downloading it as an, as an Excel file is I can also make notes and such. Like maybe I want to highlight this right here and look up what is Casa, what is that? Casa Lago Eastlake dot Lincoln Apartments dot com. So maybe there's a review there. It looks like top three Italian restaurants in Chula Vista. Oh, someone put this, uh, this client in a top three list. That sounds good. What I want to do is just because I've got these links, just because it looks like I've got uh, 300 links doesn't mean they're all quality. Here I know that I've got the links, but now I've got to spend the time to see which are quality and which are not. We'll talk about what to do with quality links and what to do with bad links. But first you have to do a little bit of researching or sleuthing. I want to see that actually. I want to open that link back in the web browser to see where what's, what's this link actually. You want to do a little bit of vouching or vetting the link. I'm going to check into it. Lincoln Property Company, Casa Lago East Lake, Top 3 Italian Restaurants, number one, it's my client right there. Number two, Mangia Italiano, they're on the same street a few blocks down. In Via Lago Trattoria, they're on a high-end one. I think they just closed recently, actually. And it makes sense because this article is from uh, a year ago. But this is a link from a website that uh, me as the owner of the company does not control. The, the restaurant owner doesn't control this website. This is an independent website that has linked to the client's website, and it's good. Overall, I'm seeing this is a good link. It seems that it's a legitimate organization. How can I tell so easily? Well, you know, you get experience once you, you, once you see a lot of websites which, which are low quality, which seem like they're fly-by-night, which seem like they're spam. Very quick view here. It seems pretty legitimate. It seems to be part of a larger organization of the Lincoln Apartments. They've got an active blog, apparently, going back a couple of years. Copyright is updated. This blog post is from a year ago, but still not as old as if it was from three years ago, four years ago. And it's got the active link back to the client. So some traffic is coming to the client from this link, from this backlink. The search engines see this, and they say, that's good. That's why if you look up <coughs> Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista, this client is going to appear higher than their competitor, which is right down the street, these guys. And even on this list, they're higher. So, I found one link so far. It seems to be a good link. Well, what do I do about that? Whenever you find good links, so I believe I have that in my handout here, uh, organizing, download your links and compile them in a spreadsheet document, review them periodically, add notes and highlight with colors. So, going back here, this seems to be a good link. So now that I've actually checked it, I'm going to mark it with blue or green, or whatever positive color. It's a good link. Yes? Well, I'm getting to that in a moment, because I'm going to show you what to do with good links, and then I'll show you what to do with bad links, because you could have bad, spammy links, and you wouldn't know this unless you review them. But this is a good link, and what I would do with the good links, taking advantage of backlinks. Now that you have a backlinks report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your own site. For example, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post about a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. In the SEO 2015 and Beyond book, the strategy is outlined best in the section Backlinks to Backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. This takes a lot of work but could pay off very well. So once I find links that are leaking to my website that are good, I then, from my companies, from the client's companies, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, 
link to those. So therefore, my followers are going to be seeing these positive links, these positive press, and then they could further share to their friends and family, therefore spreading that message out to people. I'm helping the other legitimate website get traffic, which in turn gets traffic to me, because then some could follow that link back to my website. Popularity breeds popularity in terms of SEO. So I would actually do that right now live. I'm going to log into the client's Twitter account. <clears throat> Log in, but not show their credentials. So I'm logged into the client's Twitter account. There's a couple of notifications waiting for me. Um, so there, this account so far has 60 followers, and um, what I'm going to do is I found this particular. Um, positive link so I'm gonna simply sometimes the the the, the link itself has a, a, sh a button to share right there this has already been tweeted twice and shared on Facebook three times so many times modern websites have some mechanism to share on social media again popularity breeds popularity if you visit a blog post or an article or something and see that it's been shared a lot you will probably share it too because you think other people found this relevant I want my friends and family to know about it. So there's a couple ways to do it. If you don't see a share button, you can simply copy the link, go to your Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, whatever, and share that link. You can also, if you've got the share button, click, and if you're logged in, it'll pop up automatically and fill in some things for you, like the name of the blog and the link. I'm going to take it this way. I can share it just like this, but then if we talk about if you take the SEO class, uh, the social media class, I go into more detail there about crafting your message on social media. This would be good enough to share, but uh, I would think about it a little bit more to be what to be a more effective link on social media. So, top three Italian restaurants. I could say something like, uh, "We're happy to be named a top restaurant by." Casa, what's this place again? Casa Lago Eastlake. And since it's Twitter, you're limited to your message, so actually I'm going to change it to Happy to be Named Top Restaurant because then I can quote the name of the piece right there. If I had a little more space, I could add hashtags and so forth. There's a whole art and science to this, of course. Take the social media class. And we'll do it like this. I just saw this today. I haven't planned it. But uh, with practice, it becomes more second nature. But the point is I found a positive link that puts the client in a good light. Once I do that, then I can think about how can I share that to our social media. I can share it to the client's social media, or I could share it to my own personal Facebook. Maybe I want to let my friends and family know um, about that, that article that puts them as number one. And however you want to do it, as saying, hey everyone, my client is named number one. Or I could say, everyone, look at this blog post about these great restaurants. I could be as obvious or subtle as I want. Um, it's up to you on your personal. I'm thinking about this in terms of tweeting from the business. So I'm thinking about it in terms of what can I say to the followers of my of, of this account. Happy to be named a top restaurant. Hashtag top restaurant by Casa Lago Eastlake. Thank you. And then a link back to the post, the title here. Tweet it. Now this is going to show in a bit. It's going to show that there's one more tweet there. It's going to show up on our Twitter timeline. These 60 followers would see it. The result of that could be that my current followers see it, reply to it, retweet it, favorite it, etc. There it is, which then could cause more traffic. Popularity beats popularity. I might only have 60 followers on Twitter, but those followers have followers. And therefore, 
if a person then um, sees that and retweets it, I could be reaching more of an audience than only the amount that are direct followers. I would have never known that link existed unless I checked my backlinks. That's why we set those up. Any questions so far? That was an example of what to do with a positive link. Uh, let me look around a little bit more here, perhaps to find a negative web. I don't know why I have a bad feeling that in, tra in a transnet is not a good link. Um, the reason I say that is, through experience, websites that have dashes in the file name tend to be low quality sites because if someone really wanted dog walkers east lake it was taken a while ago so maybe you really want that name so you go for dog dash walkers dash east lake maybe that's also taken so you're not able to get the name that you want it's been already taken probably by spammers spammers that think they can then sell that to the legitimate owner and so what spammers also do is claim as many variations. They put dashes in the file name, the address name. And so through experience, oftentimes, domains with dashes are low quality. Now, you might have a dash in your domain, and you know that you're not low quality. I believe you. But you run with a bad crowd, you get caught up in that bad crowd. And the thing about the search engines is, unfortunately for them, at the moment, is guilty until proven innocent. If there are factors that seem to make your website look like a spam website, you're a spam website until you prove to the search engines you're not. So let me take a quick look. What's inatrans.net all about? It's going to ask, do these spammers have to pay for all these domains? They do. Yeah, domains are not free, but that investment of maybe $500 could get them $1,000 from illegitimate clicks and people that are not so computer savvy you know grandma that believes everything that's online is going to click on everything and they're getting traffic and therefore they're getting revenue so hopefully I didn't open up anything not safe for work but first of all it is in Japanese and um, what's the site about selling my selling mice over here and um, 70% off Amazon fashion ads, that's how they make money. If I click on this 70% off, this company gets money. Um, it might be a website that reviews restaurants and such. Basketball season tickets. In a trans web design. <clears throat> see about loading up the Google Translator. Maybe I can get a general idea of what the site is about. America's shirtless. Americans walking through the city, American shirtless. Continuation of the Mission Beach intersection. Cold, only short sleeve t-shirt during the day. Well, maybe it's someone that's traveling the US. This is the impression I have. Used one month only your phone. Then take to the real your phone from Docomo is the impression I have used one month. The one month impression of using that phone. So maybe they're traveling the US and this is their blog. <clears throat> and at some point they stop by that that client's restaurant. And maybe they wrote something positive or negative about the restaurant. So um So I'm not quite ready to, to say this is a bad site, actually. But I'm going to, let's just assume, just to tell you what I want to tell you. Let's assume it's a spam website. Let's say I research that a little bit, and it's a spam website because there's no relevant content. Uh, it's just full of ads, badly spelled, and just a bad website. You can be guilty by association. You can be guilty until proven innocent. 
bad backlinks. So if there are several links coming to my site that are bad, that are low quality, that are irrelevant, guilty until proven innocent, the search engine will see then your website must be bad and low quality and spammy because you're hanging out with the bad and low quality spammy websites. No, I'm not. I just got caught in the crossfire. Well, we've got a recourse for that. It's called disavow links. We have in both Bing and Google a way to say please don't take those websites into account when ranking my website. They don't represent my website. Um, the instructions of how to get to that are both here. In Bing, visit your dashboard, open configure my site, click on disavow links, and add the link. Easy. Let me show you. <clears throat> Back in Bing Webmaster, configure my site. And you've got an option that says right there, disavow links. And there's three ways to do it. You can disavow a particular page on a website. Let's say, well, like this one here, page 17. Page 17 of the website might be the low quality spam site, spam page, so I can disavow that one page. Honestly, usually it's not one page that's the problem, it's the whole site. Because there's, it's no big deal for a spammer to create a website with 500 pages that are bad and spam and illegitimate and therefore just disavowing one of those pages is not really going to help you because they'll just make another page, page 12. So the better option is to select domain. If you've got domain then you'll tell Bing in this case everything coming from that website, linking to my website is bad, disavow it. Do not pay attention to it, do not take it into account. Now we're proving our innocence this way, disavow. And in the middle, again, not that useful, is the, the one in the middle, directory. Well, we can say everything in the blog is bad and spam, so disavow that. But again, if one page is spam, the whole blog is spam, most likely the whole site is spam. So in my company, we hardly ever do page or directory. Really, it's the whole site, because the whole site is an illegitimate and bad, spammy website. Yes? With, this, with the link, um, the, the spam website still be... Active link. It'll still be an active link that still exists. We have no way to take off links from anyone else's website, and neither do the search engines. But now the search engines will not take those into account. Now, so, what about if it's negative review up here? Does that affect? That doesn't. Your... That doesn't count. No, this mm. is uh, negative reviews. Uh, it's sort of um, even. You know, when they say um, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, it's going to hurt with that two-star review, but it's still giving you eyeballs, that's still giving you traffic. Um, so, But no, th these disavow links are not about trying to clean up reputation that way in reviews. They're trying to clean up and trying to corral the negative spam websites away from the legitimate real websites. The recourse of bad reviews, which is another topic, which is you need to take the time to try to fix the review. What can you do to fix the review? If it's a bad Yelp review, you have the power to claim your account on Yelp and reach out to the people that have given you a bad review and say, how can we make it better? We're sorry that was a bad day. Please let us help you. Here's 5% off or something that we can then turn that bad review into a good review. If it's a person's personal blog attacking you and such, you could still try that. There's often the ability to add comments you can add a public comment and try to fix things and smoothen it out. And sometimes that will not work. But no, there's no way to take down any other's content, really, unless it's like slanderous and libelous, and then you get the courts involved. And then that's a big topic as well. Now, when you talk about spammy websites, what would be the benefit to them if you have a link to your site? Money. Because right here, if I click on that ad to buy that shoe, um, they got a little bit of money from that click. Any traffic that's coming to this site and then they click on the ads, this, uh, this the author of the site gets um, gets gets money from the from the links. Now, from a less savvy webmaster, they might not know about disavowing bad links. So 
if that other website links to your website, you could link back to them in a misguided attempt to, you know, to get links back and sorted. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. So then they get more traffic back out of you. So the point is traffic. It's every website really is about traffic, eyeballs, views for some sort of monetary plan. You know, when you read these websites about uh, you know, cooking websites, how to how to cook something, you're going to see ads on the side to buy that perfect knife to cook that to cook that uh, meal. You're going to buy that knife, they're going to get that cut from Amazon or wherever. This website here for some reason has got technology links and so forth. They seem to be a you know, a review, review site, but if I click on any of these and end up buying that mouse, they get a kickback from that. So it's all about the traffic. Traffic to a website, traffic from a website, to, to get eyeballs, to get clicks, to get money. How often should a person check the back list? Once a month is a good, is a good um, strategy. Once a month, log into Bing and Google. And, and download them and hopefully you've already downloaded it from the previous month so you can compare previous month to this month. Are there any new links? Add them to the, your master list of, of links. Um, for example on this one I've, I saw well this is a bad link so I'm going to mark it as red. Therefore I have it here and at a glance I can see good links and bad links. Next month I can then compare that link is not, doesn't show up anymore on my webmaster tools because Bing or Google have disallowed it disavowed it so it doesn't show up on your results anymore. In this case, you can, uh, might be, you can erase some, let's say one of your customers doesn't want to work with you anymore. Mm -hmm. You can erase that, right? He can then put his company into his personal uh, Bing or Google well, notice the way I've got it set up. On my personal Bing account, I've then set up the accounts for all of these clients. And therefore, I've added access to all of the clients and other people on my team. So if we end up not working with a particular client anymore, we're the kind of company that we can move on. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other companies that don't, and they want to keep you locked into their company. But in our company, we will we'll see great. You know, let's move on. It didn't work out. Fine. So we can then detach ourselves from the access to their data, and move on. Then they have the data still on their own on their own Bing account. We've moved on. We have no that access no longer. And then you know, if we're keeping track of it in a spreadsheet and such, well, we'll give it to them. We have we give everything to the client: their passwords and their original photos and their data. We give it to them. If they request, we delete it and we delete it. Unfortunately, some companies are not like that. I get students coming in all the time when I talk about, okay, bring your password to log in to make changes to your site. They say, well, I don't have my password. I tell them, ask who designed your site. They come back and say they won't give me the password. They tell, they say, ask they they want me to ask them to make the change. I said, okay, that's a bit of a red flag. You should be able to make changes on your own site, even if you're not that savvy. They might be trying to protect you from breaking the site, sure. But if they don't want to give you your own passwords, that's a red flag. And I've had people say, I, I can't get any, I can't get my site out of the hands of this company. What do I do? And I say, really, it's your only recourse is going to be legal. You're going to start to say uh, subtly or forcefully, hey, I know lawyers because that's my property. It's my website, it's my content, it's my name, it's my trademark, all of that, it's my photos. Why are you not giving me access to my own property? Doesn't happen that often, but people do come in with that. And when my company takes on clients, sometimes we run into that too. They want to work with us and we say, okay, great. Compile all your login information and such. And they say, well, the reason I'm not working with my other client, the other designer anymore, is because they won't give me that information. Unfortunately, we can spend the time to try to retrieve it. Sometimes it works that my company directly talks to that company and say, hey, we're trying to do this, please give us the passwords. And sometimes they pass it over, and sometimes not. The best thing is to start over, choose another name and start over, unfortunately. It doesn't always happen, but there are avenues to explore. So the big idea then is now that we've got our, our website set up with the search engines, we can start to check backlinks, start to deal with good ones and bad ones. Good ones, you want to hype them. I don't know if that's the official term, that's the one I like to use. You hype your links. You're going to take these links that are good, you're going to share them on Twitter, or Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. You're going to hype them. You're going to get more activity, more, more traffic to those links, so that in turn 
in turn that gets more traffic back to you. And then bad links, you're going to disavow them so that they don't drag you down. And yes, this takes time and effort, but it's something you want to do once a month uh, to be on top of these things to deal with the good and deal with the bad. Because of our time, I, I won't go in to show how it, how it looks like on Google. It's all in my instructions here, but it's the same concept. You log into Google Analytics, you get one set of you get one report. You log into web, you log into Google Analytics, you get a different report. Like I said, maybe one day they'll, they'll combine the two. But at the moment, you you should be looking at Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. They have two types of data. And in my notes here, I tell you to find it in Google Webmaster. Log in, go to search traffic, and it's called links to your site. Download it so that you get an Excel file, so you can work with that. Webmaster in Analytics, it's a little more, a few cup, uh, a few more clicks, but same sort of thing. Go to your website, go to the acquisition menu, go to all referrals, and then go to source, and that will tell you all of your links, where they're coming from. Download it so that you can work with it in Excel, and then deal with the good and the bad. I do have to also say. It's actually more complicated for a good reason in Google Analytics to disavow to disavow bad links because Google is the largest search engine and if you disavow if you disavow a site that really wasn't a spam site you suddenly cut out a lot of traffic to your site so there is no direct button in Google Analytics to disavow links like there is on on Bing Webmaster I, I'm telling you you just go to that follow these steps on Bing Webmaster and you get there. On Google, the fastest way that I've seen to get to the disavow tool is to Google search disavow tool. You do a Google search for Google disavow tool and that'll give you a secret link secret link over to the Google disavow tool and they'll give you big warnings that say this is an advanced feature. If you're gonna do this, be aware that you might uh, you know, cut legitimate traffic from your site. So there's instructions there. It's a little bit different than Bing. Same concept. You're going to submit a text file that has a list of these bad links. You're going to upload a simple text file. Um, but it's at that link. It's at that direct link right there. So we're going to take a short break in a moment, and uh, this is the end result. We have backlinks. We have traffic to our site. Okay, backing up, how do I get traffic to my site? We'll take a break, and then we'll talk about that. Any general questions, though? Okay, let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 7.02, and then we'll go on.